be intentional about everything in life. Hello, viewers. This is Be Intentional with Cheska. I'm back again. But let me start off by saying a big thank you to you all out there for the support on the Be Intentional of the Be Intentional vision. Um, it's been amazing. Thank you for subscribing to my page. Thank you for liking the post I put out there. Thank you for sharing it to your friends and on your walls. But honestly, I am very, very, very grateful to you for the time you spend in watching the, these videos. And I'm glad to have you on board intentionally. But guess what? Today is going to be epic. Now, we've been talking about authentic intimacy building authentic intimacy and I am so privileged today to present to you another aspect of authentic intimacy. How do we build authentic intimacy? And today is a special edition I'm not hosting by myself. I'm co-hosting with my own hobby director Kenneth Affle, my sweetheart, my husband and my director the one and only producer, Be Intentional with Chester. And we are hosting today's topic or episode on authentic sure. intimacy. We're going to be as authentic as we can and we're going to be real. Sure. But the biggest blessing of today is I have a wonderful woman with me. Yeah. Now let me tell you a little about this woman. And I came across her or God brought her into our lives, into our marriage mm -hmm. at a time we needed help. That's right. Just before I go into it, let me just assure you, when you need help, seek for help. Now, God brought this woman to us. And for those of you who don't know, there were years ago that we almost called it quits in this marriage. Yes, right. we all go through the patches. It wasn't easy. Yeah. But we wanted to do something about it because what we had was just too good to throw away. And by God's grace and divine connection, she brought us this woman. She's a loving woman. She's a dynamic consultant with a background in health. She is a life coach. She is a passionate motivator as well. And she is a counselor. She will counsel. She counseled us yeah. throughout the time, took us through all the turns of this beautiful marriage that we have. And I'm very honored to have her join me on Be Intentional with Cheska as we talk about authentic marriage. We today we're gonna fo focus on the empty box of marriage. Right. We're gonna put so many, so we have a box, an empty box of marriage. Just imagine us having an empty box of marriage sitting right on this table and we're going to put everything in it and we have it. So may I introduce to you Mrs. Jennifer Laban. Hi. You're welcome. Hi, yeah. Thank you. Well, as Amazing. we go into it, you would have to Amazing. permit me. She is Mrs. Jennifer Laban, but I call her Auntie Jenny. <laughs> and for the purpose of us being authentic and honest and feeling free and talking about what we want to talk about, I'm going to stick to Auntie Jenny. So <laughs> you're going to have to permit me, guys. And then we'll get going. And Jenny, Hello. I'm honored to have you with me. We are honored. We are honored, exactly. We are honored to have you here. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. Enjoy yes. your past. And Fantastic. Exactly, she flew all the way from me, um, from, from London, me. Yeah. yeah, and it was hard to leave your husband oh. <laughs> <laughs> for two days <laughs> and come and spend that time with us, we appreciate it so much. Oh, thank you, thank you. No, that's a real privilege and I'm looking forward to the chat. And Jenny, you've been a great blessing. Yeah, absolutely. I hope you know it because you've been, you know it, you've been a great blessing and to a large extent, in as much as God has been with us, the beautiful marriage we have, the beautiful thing we share, Ken and I share, a part of it is about what God used you to do to with do us. Marriage, yeah. It's just beautiful. So I, I, I thought that if we're, we're talking about building authentic marriage, then it would really be great to have you here and let's have this discussion and tell the world or give the world what we also know can help to build authentic marriage. Because yes. marriage is beautiful. God intended. God intended it to be very beautiful. 
And so here we are, and we're talking about the empty box of marriage. But we want to start off with expectations. Sure. Yes, yeah. expectations. <laughs> expectations. There are many. I realize that we come into marriage with so many expectations, or we don't even come with expectations at all, if that's possible. But what I think about that is the reason why looking deep from what we went through, from what we came to you with, yeah. I look back and I think that the biggest thing or the biggest hurdle we needed to get over was our expectations. Yeah. And I think that in marriage or in any relationship, the reason why people get offended in the relationship is offense happens because of the gap between what your expectations were and what you were able to offer me. So I had expectations. Where I'm going to be offended is that gap where you didn't feel my expectations. So tell us about expectations in marriage. It's interesting because as you were saying that, I was thinking about um, those particular expectations and often some of the issues are the fact that those expectations aren't always shared. Yes. So I might have expectations, but they're in my head. And often as women, as you know, we expect the men to read our minds. Um, so, <laughs> so some of those expectations, some of those expectations aren't even shared. And so, but often they create a lot of the issues because okay. we, we we left we are left unsatisfied because those things that we're expecting within that marriage haven't one haven't been shared or not been met. Okay. But should we really come into the marriage with expectations in the first place? I don't think you can help that because we we don't come into marriage with blank pages, so to speak, do we? Um, often the expectations that we have are either because of the marriages we've seen, either our parents, or and whether the parents' marriage was really good or yeah. not good. Um, so you've got certain things in your mind. Either you're thinking, my parents' marriage was marvellous, yeah. and that's exactly how I want mine to be, so my husband better be like my dad. Um, or your parents' marriage once wasn't so good and what you want to do is avoid anything like that. So the hint of anything, the smell of anything that could be like your parents drives you crazy. Mm. Okay. Nevertheless, having said all that, the man may not even know. So what you're saying is those expectations are not communicated either. They're not communicated. So going back to the question, should you come into a marriage with expectations? I don't think you can help it. But I think part of the addressing those issues is being real and mm -hmm. sometimes you don't even know that that's what you're expecting. So it's about understanding mm -hmm. and, and it's and it's rolling along and sometimes you don't hit those blocks till much later on in the marriage actually because yeah. you know, we talked about didn't yeah. we and um, the beginning of a marriage is so rosy because you've got all those what do you call it, rose tinted glasses that you're wearing at the beginning of your marriage um, and those expectations you're not you're not necessarily even looking for them at the moment because it's lined and or covered with that initial rush of what is it? Boom boom. Boom boom. boom. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. You know, or, or, or ask somebody else like the honeymoon period. Yeah, butterflies you know, in the stomach. Yeah, the butterflies in the stomach, the heart racing when yeah. you see them because Ooh. you're already all excited about the new the new life you're embarking on. <laughs> wow. Well, um, I, I am interested in this because uh, until recently I didn't realize the biggest thing for me was the expectations I came with. And like you rightly said, sometimes it's down to what you saw previously or when you were younger and, and with your parent or what marriage looked like and what you probably said, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to go this way. And then you see anything that looks like that, and then you jump at it. And personally, mm -hmm. that was that was my problem, mm -hmm. you know. But the problem with me and Ken on that front was, I one I didn't know that was my problem. That was what I was doing, and two, um, I didn't communicate it. So I jump at anything that looked like what I saw. Yeah. And he's going like, I didn't understand. Why are you blowing this out? Oh, no, so tell me. I'm about to bite my off. <laughs> so, yes, mm -hmm. but on your part, what what is it? What do you have to say about expectations? Did you have any expectations? Or, yes, um, I did. Um, for me, you know, 
my mum and dad were were um, were not in the same country because my mum was abroad and working hard to provide for the family, and my dad was with us. So my dad was with a mum and a dad, you know, all together. So that's what I saw, and that's how come I got that nature as well, you know, being mum like and you know, taking care of children and things like that. I've got that because I don't know from my mom. But from time to time, I'll go stay with my auntie and, 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 and uh, her husband and things like that. And, you know, um, typical Kuru kind of thing. You know, um, he you know he would serve the husband. He would be on the table by himself and there'll be some orange juice or some pineapple juice and his fufu and stuff. I'm like, oh wow, I can't wait to be a daddy and now and I'll be sad. You know, you remember I talked yeah. about the way we got having, married. Ha- having <laughs> said that, um, I'm not cutting you up. Having said that, Ken couldn't stop telling me how oh I would want the orange juice being squeezed <laughs> and then in a jug and put her out like for God's sake, there's not orange juice in the shops. I, I can't look at and Every time we made breakfast, he didn't demand it. But I knew he would he love that. Expected. But it was an expectation I could never meet. We've got kids, three kids to run after. I'm not coming to screens. <laughs> Orange juice. And as simple as it was, he was never disappointed with it, you know? Yeah. But um, Still somehow it was, uh, yeah, I felt it's a demand probably can never meet. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Sorry I cut you off. Yeah, so I, so I had um, um, glimpses of, you know, uh, uh, what it should be like, but I think um, for some reason at, at a point I said steady, you know, and to read. So that really helped me about, you know, I think was it um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, that those from those times, yeah. So I started with those. So it just started to build a clear picture of the difference between men and women and things like that, and marriage, and you know. So I, uh, I think. The, is it Tim LaHaye and his books yeah, his wife so yeah. back in those days when I became a Christian I started getting into those things I started to learn so those things helped me so even though my mom and dad weren't physically together in the same household um, I was reading these things it helped me um, you know um, you know have a deformed picture of what marriage should be like you know and and I um my mom was amazing having to, to think about how she had to sacrifice be away from her children to, to, to provide for us to take us to the best schools to provide for us everything we need needed it was amazing how could a woman do that you know like to to sacrifice all those years and so the, i i had a, a love and admiration for her that you know was was amazing so my mom was very very strong you know to to miss out on our growing up and things like that, and to pro- provide for us, you know. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> then from from the way we, we we're looking at it, um, like you said, we can't help it. I mean, that that's literally the first time I'm hearing this because I've just been wondering: should you come in with expectations, or should you not? Which way is better? But it, it, as you've said. You can't help it. So that is such a good point. You can't help it. But now, it actually means that in that box, marriage box, which you've come in with expectation, some of the expectations could actually be baggage. Some of them, absolutely. And actually, going back to the reason why you might have expectations, one of the key things, at least for me, if I think about how I... I, 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 my, my ideal image of marriage actually came from some of the movies you watch. You know when you're a teenager, yeah. yeah, and you watch those movies and you see those couples mm. and they're honey this, honey that, and you're thinking that's exactly what I want my marriage to be. Yeah. And for those of us who grew up in the Cosby, there I mentioned Cosby, the Cosby era. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. oh, my goodness! I you know I mean? You used to love that, and yeah. what an ideal family. Claire Huxtable. <laughs> yeah. What an yeah. ideal family. Yeah. So we come building those expectations yeah. not only from our own parents, but yeah. but some of that. Let's be real, that, that was in real life. No. Um, and yes, for some of us, it sets a sort of level that we wanted to achieve. But going back to the baggage, um, I think some of those exercises definitely are the baggage that we hold. And mm-hmm. as Ken was talking about his growing up and his mom and dad, and the things that shaped you are definitely, you, you can tell how you've been shaped yeah. by virtue of your growing up. Yeah. So, all those things, when you come into a marriage, you're not going to leave that, no. are you? You're actually definitely going to, that's Ken. You're going to bring that with you. Yeah, because my um, dad was cooking, it was pla- um, doing my sister's hair to go to school and go. all that. So, yeah. 
I grew up knowing that you know my dad should do that, yeah. but you know, baby yeah. children. Yeah. Like that. And that background that you carry and you bring, call it baggage, call it whatever, yeah. you would not always know about it. Yeah. And actually Ken himself may not always know yeah. that he has that because for him that's normal. Yeah. But for you that might be, wow, you did your sister's hair, really? But that shaped him into the man that he is. Um, but it will only it will take something else that brings that bit out, and then suddenly mm -hmm. I call it your. In in, in Ghana we have a, a, another word for baggage. We call portmanteau. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Your portmanteau. I'm aware you're going to take a mm -hmm. take a, a portmanteau with you. It's your trunk, um, and there are things in your trunk, and you don't always know what's in your trunk. And even harder, your spouse won't know what's in there unless you show them what's in that portmanteau, what's in that trunk. Well, unless you show them. <laughs> Wow, so this, what do you call normal, is not normal to the other person. Yeah. And as we were talking, I'm just thinking in my head, these were things we didn't talk about when we were going out, mm -hmm. when we were courting, when we were dating. Yeah. We didn't really, when we talked, if we ever talked about expectations, it was more like how many children would we be having. Mm -hmm. We didn't even talk about how we were going to raise them the for us to be yes. <laughs> for us to be able to identify the fact that we're actually not on the same page. You know, so then it becomes a baggage because we are in love and we we are having the pum 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 pum. And you're a fine man, and I'm in love with you. You are in love with me. He treats me well. He treats me like. Um, an angel or whatever and I thought that was it he understood me for who I was and everything and I thought how bad would that be in marriage only for me to realize that there were certain things I didn't know I didn't have I didn't know I had them in my in my portmanteau yes. in my bag in my trunk yeah. and I came in with so um some of these things that you just mentioned ended your statement by saying and when you get to know what is in is another thing also opening it up and then that leads us to vulnerability isn't oh it but before we go on to vulnerability let me let me let me read something that the marriage box it says that most people get married believing a myth that marriage is a beautiful box full of all the things they have longed for companionship intimacy friendship etc the truth is that marriage at the start is an empty box you must put something in before you can take anything out there is no love in marriage love is in people mm. Mm. there is no love in marriage Brilliant. love is in people Wow. And people put love in marriage. There is no romance in marriage. Wow. There is no romance in marriage. You have to infuse it into your marriage. A couple must learn the art and form the habit of giving, loving, serving, praising, keeping the box full. Be intentional. If you take out more than you put in, the box will be empty. Wow, what a thing to say. If you take out more than you are putting in. I think that's where marriage being work comes in. I'd, I'd agree with that because I think often we, we you can't go to the bank unless you put money. You can't go take money out of the no. bank unless you've actually already invested. Unless you're a thief. Unless you're a thief. Unless you're a thief. Which is what we've all probably <laughs> been for some time. Yes. You could, I, I remember this really um, wise saying that you know people throw around all the time that if you yeah. think the grass is greener, water your own. You know, if, if your neighbor's grass looks greener than yours, water yours. Because the only reason why his grass is greener because he's been watering it and nurturing it. So you can't take anything out unless you put something in. There's nothing to take. Wow. That's something we need to be intentional about because yes. yes, I I am not making effort. I'm not being intentional about what I'm putting in. Yet I'm going to have expectations of what should come out. I have yeah. expectation that the marriage should be full of romance. You should treat me well. You should be kissing, kissing me, buying me presents. I want to what kiss you all the time. <laughs> what am I putting in? And why am I drawing so much out when I'm not putting in that much? Yes. 
And uh, do you remember somebody said the other day also that actually most couples go into marriage believing that it's 50 50? Yes. Well, okay, what's your take on that? It's 100 It's 100 percent You can't go in giving 50 and expecting the other 50 from somebody else and it goes back to that box. You've got to put 100% in and you've got to put 100% in. It's not, it's not a 50-50. It's not a 50-50. Well, well yeah. let's think. So how does that happen? Naturally, we expect it to be 50 because we think 250 is making 100%. Yeah. That's the natural world and that's how we do But uh, Personally, if I come in with only half of who I am and you only come in with half, then I, I'm only giving you half. So who you are may not ideally be a hundred percent person or a full person, even if it's a seventy percent person. If you put in all the seventy, you've actually put in your hundred percent. But how can you be a seventy percent person? You've got if you're in marriage, if you're talking about authentic intimacy, mm -hmm. then you get to all of yourself. That's where the vulnerability comes in. All of you or nothing. It's all or nothing. All so or nothing. it cannot be seventy. It has to be hundred. You cannot be a seventy percent person. So you're putting in the bad, the good, and the bad, everything, all of it, all of it. So that brings us on vulnerability, being vulnerable. <laughs> it's interesting from a man's perspective. Yes, let's hear what it is for a man to be vulnerable. Well, you know, you you guys know where we come from. You know. The, as a young child, you always start to be strong, you know, don't show any emotion, bear man soon and all that kind of thing. So it's, it's something that we grow up knowing and, and there's no, it, it really takes a lot to open up and be sincere about how you really feel because we see that as a sign of weakness, you know, but um, I've learned that that's not the case. And, and, um, Sometimes we need to have that trust with our spouse in order to open up fully. So there's time we start to test the waters, you know, in the initial part of the marriage. So if I tell you things and then later you get angry, we have a fight or disagreement, and then you use those things oh against me, oof, the wall, the yeah, wall comes back again. Yeah, <laughs> it comes back up again. <laughs> so. So there are times that we went through that whereby, you know, I would open up certain things to her and, uh, you know, and uh, at times when, you know, I misbehave and she gets upset, um, if she turns to you so yes, we all even tell somebody else, then, yeah, then yeah, it breaks that trust. It takes a while to build that trust again, but yeah. So, so you're saying that what, can you, what, what makes you able to show your vulnerable side is having to trust. Yes. In your spouse. Yes. Without trust, you can't do yeah. it. Yeah. And those, what are some of the things that you're thinking? So I'm asking all No, no, I want you to read that. We are in this together. We are in this together. We are in this together. I want to yes. But it, it's really about, I was, I was interested in what you said about, you know, you test the waters. Yes. And often men do do that. And we miss, we women miss the cues, yeah. don't we? Did we you? miss it when the men test the waters and we get it wrong. And then they, 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 they really feel, they struggle to do it again. And then we wonder why they're not talking to us. And we wonder why intimacy is lost. Yeah, yeah because to be intimate with somebody, you've got to give your all. Yeah. Don't you? So I, I, that, that's really, that struck me yeah. quite a bit about, you know, testing the waters. Yes. And, and, and when you hold back a certain part of your life, it, it, you're not being real, you know, no yeah. matter how. You may think that you may not affect it, but in certain ways yeah. it would. Yeah. It would affect you know, talk of vulnerability. And being vulnerable is laying yourself bare. According to the Bible, Adam and Eve, they were naked and they were not ashamed. Mm -hmm. Now, I was thinking about this aspect of vulnerability. They were naked and not ashamed. What were they naked and exposing? They were exposing their private parts. Mm -hmm. So what is private to yeah. you? And they were exposing their sensitive parts. Yeah. So what is sensitive to you? We're all being exposed to each other. That's mm. amazing. Yeah. This is private, a private thing to me. So I think um, for me, um, that was one of the places I failed at that time because um, to start with, Ken would not come out naturally 
to talk about what is private to him. It's always about us and us. Or even my fears. But, yes, you know, all his fears. And maybe maybe the, the rent is due and, you know, I'm not yeah. sure where. He wouldn't talk about it. Give the money or things like that, you know. Or, you know, you know and he, he, he would just keep it to himself. But on the out on the outside, I saw him going about his normal duties. Yeah. So I didn't think he had anything that he was hiding, and it was very private to him. And his fears were private to him. His that's him being sensitive to something which he's hiding. And then, like he said, when he's really opened up and talked about it, I wouldn't go out to tell anybody. No, but. Should the same thing happen again, I would bring it up. Because in my mind, I thought, no, you said it yourself. So why have you, yeah, maybe let me remind you. But not knowing that, that meant to him, oh, I didn't say it for you to use it against me. That's how. And never for once did he say, I didn't say it for you to use against me. But it so happened that it means next time I cannot be guarded. Guarded. Yeah. So then you, the wife, you don't become a safe place. You talked about the when we we're talking the last time. You talked about a safe place to land. The story of the aeroplane. Can you share with us? <laughs> so I love the analogy of that, and often um, I love traveling, as you know. So and, and often when you're nearly home. Yeah. And you get to the airport, and the pilot announces, "says we're just about to land, but we're waiting for air traffic control mm -hmm. to tell us whether it's safe." And you keep circling around and circling around and circling. Mm -hmm. Twenty minutes later, you're still circling. And often it's because the pilot is waiting for a safe place to land. And what Ken just described often mm -hmm. reminds me of that because for men, and I'm, I'm speaking for men because I've been I, I, obviously I have a husband, and I know what that feels like sometimes with men being able to share and. And, and it's we often don't think of we often think of men as strong yeah. and yes you are strong but I often also know that for, for men to be strong they need the women to to recognize that in them um, and without us being in the safe place those men can't land and so they will circle around and circle around and as Ken said he will test the waters so he will do hello air traffic control is it safe to land um, and if air traffic control isn't showing any signs that it's safe to land, he ain't gonna land. Yeah. And, wow. and and if he runs out of fuel, mm. guess what? <laughs> runs out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> What's gonna happen? He's either gonna crash land or he's gonna find somewhere else mm. that's safe. Wow, place. runs out of fuel. So the fact that you don't have a safe place to land as a man, or even as a woman these days, some women also don't well I think for women because we talk to our friends and everything we kind of have a bit of a safe place to learn but for men because they don't even want to expose what they are going through with their male yeah. yes. friends so as well. if he gets a lesson here from somewhere else so some mother some some somebody in the office or the workplace or you know his circle uh, and if and he, God forbid that maybe if, if it's a is the opposite sex and if he finds a safe place on land, oh my that's God. why it tends to lead to Woo! you know some other things whereby you know because because he's found a safe place. Yeah, land. Like maybe in his head from the start, um, he's not planning to have an affair, but um, it's safe for him. It's safe for him, and he begins to open up and keeps keeps going, 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 going. At so, that point in time, so let's make this clear: we're not justifying no, 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 no. that men. The fact that your wife is not a safe place means you will find a safe no, place elsewhere. Exactly. I think what we're trying to say here today mm -hmm. is painting or, 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 or exposing yeah. some of the factors that doesn't course, allow yeah. either either mm -hmm. spouse to be vulnerable exactly. to one another. Yeah. Because to have true intimacy, there needs to be that vulnerable. You need mm -hmm. to be able to show us you just said with Adam and Eve, they were not embarrassed. Exactly. Um, and, and, and I think that's key thing. So we're not by no. any means justifying no. the fact that no. you should find Absolutely a safe no. place no. elsewhere. I think what we're trying to expose is that we as women have a role to play in helping our men be the people that God wants them exactly. to be. Yeah. And that's why I love Sonia Marshall because she's a praying wife. And if anybody hasn't read that book, it's it's a powerful book because women we have a role to play to pray for our men and stand behind them 
to enable them to fulfill their full destiny that God gave to them that's right. right from the beginning. And that, that's our that's our role. Mm. And I often say, and I'm probably talking too much, but I often no, say, let's have this. And we had a conversation the other day about, um, you know, the fact that by the time most Christian couples have decided to get married and go for marriage counselling, it's probably too late, in my view, uh, because by the time they already they already committed before they start marriage counselling. Oh, I personally yeah. believe that marriage. Counseling should actually switch to be marriage education. Good okay, point. Ooh, I think we have to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because um, unless you understand yeah. what marriage is, and I often say that when I discovered that marriage, my marriage, was a ministry, I was already twenty odd years into my marriage before the insight that this was a ministry became clear. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because I think going back, even though, like I said, I've read a lot and it really helped me. So, so I needed some practical steps, you know, to, to guide me. So when we started, so in my mind, like like I said, I came to the marriage knowing that I see all other women as trees. So that, that no offense, women. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> That's how it had to work for him. Yeah, and I had to purposely know that. Um, it's not like a shop where you're going to buy something and you're going to return it. So I told my wife that divorce is not no. part of our vocabulary. So whatever it takes, we're going to work everything out. Yeah. You know, I read things like don't let the sun go down your anger. It's like, you know, there's times when we still go to bed and that was all the issues. You know, but yes, in some ways we, we yeah. So um, I th- we're blessed to have, we have, uh, we did counseling twice. Yeah. Two different people. The one the church gave us, um, they were so amazing. They were amazing. Fantastic. We yeah. have the best married counselors. Seriously. Yes. And then we had our brother in Joyful as well, who, who offered Frank us. Frank Lane, Frank Lane, yeah, 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 he, he, yeah, he was married. So he was, he was, re- he, he hadn't been married for a long time yet, so at least it was fresh for him and things like that. But he had, you know, a good guy around from, you know, his parents and his father being a pastor and everything. Yeah. So, so, we saw two different aspects, and but they all went to help us, yeah. you know, yeah. to become what we are today. And another thing that I think a lot of couples don't do is post marriage counseling, which a lot of people leave out because yeah. we realize that even after marriage, that's when you even need more, it really more. helped us that time that mm-hmm. God brought you into our lives. Yeah. Like, I don't know what would have happened with that because, like mm-hmm. Ken is saying, sorry, honey, like Ken is saying. He came into the marriage thinking, this is a room, or it's not a shop, you go and buy something and return it. I honestly came into marriage, I haven't got time to waste. If it's not working, I'm out. I've seen it all around me, so that thing that I saw that I don't want, I'm going to do my best, but if it's still hanging around, come on, let's get a separate way. But I didn't realize it's what I've told myself and it's what I was doing. So to be honest with you, everything that happened, for me, the solution is I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I saw my parents, they were lovely. But you know, when you're a child, things you see and parents think you don't see them. You see, so it, it was. It was for me. No, I'm not. I'm not going to tolerate this, and especially because then my, my mom didn't live long to enjoy as a mother. Like I put everything to. Oh, she went through too much stress. It's all part of it. So for me, I'm not going through that stress. For sure. And one day, Ken said something that was so profound because I realized he always felt there's always a solution. Because yeah. with some of the things we face, I felt there is literally no solution, no way out. Mm-hmm. Maybe if we go our separate ways, we would have a wake-up call. And then one day he said, Jessica, I'm in this marriage. I feel I am in a, a, a room where there is no door mm-hmm. and there is no window. For me, that's how I see marriage. Once we've come in, we are placed in it and it's locked and the key is being thrown out. So the only choice I have is to make it work. Is to make it work. work. Yeah. And that was quite profound. He so said, it's not like that. And our bishop used to say, marriage is not like going to the shoe shop where you try the shoes on. Yeah. It doesn't fit you. 
and then say, I, 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 I will change it. So when Ken kept saying those things to me, one day I just thought, actually, how about I throw this whole, I can't take it, let's finish it aside and look at it this way after so many counseling sessions because I think that's the approach you also came in with. You always, and I remember there, there, was, there were times that really annoyed. I thought you were not helping us <laughs> because you are also, yeah. I felt you were siding with, with me. Yeah. <laughs> to you, there is no way out of this. You're staying in and you're making it work. Yeah. Now that was great. Because one, we've been able to make ourselves vulnerable to somebody, which is very necessary. And if you're out there, and I know sometimes I say, don't go spreading news to people about your marriage. Every marriage has problems. Okay. And so the person you're going to talk to, you don't know what it, but I think it shouldn't stop you from talking. Yeah. I pray that you find somebody as Auntie Jenny who will be a safe place you can be vulnerable to because yeah. It is such a, I can't believe that we would have thrown all that away yeah. if God didn't bring you. Yeah. Isn't that interesting though? Because for me, when I sit back and I reflect, I often think, and so where as Christians have we gone wrong? Because like you, I also, in fact, I will remember very, very clearly when I was getting married and we have this tradition where your mother puts the veil yeah. on your head and prays. And I remember my marriage day or my wedding day, my mother putting the veil on my head and was just about to pray. And my mother was the most, the most tolerant woman on earth. The most patient. What is it that my mother didn't tolerate in her marriage? And I often used to look at her and think, wow. But guess what? When she was about to put the veil on my head and pray, it struck me that if this woman prayed for me, I might end up with that same grace and I didn't want it. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> the grace to be tolerant. No, one I'm like, Mom, hold on a minute. If you're going to pray for the grace that you have to tolerate that, please don't pray that prayer. Because like you, like you, I was I was of the impression that, you know, I mean, if there were certain things I wasn't going to tolerate in the marriage, and I did not have that mindset, as I said to you, it took me years to recognize that this God-given institution was a ministry. And until I started to see it, as a ministry, as unto the Lord, I was miserable. I mean, you know, as I, unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. This marriage is as unto the Lord. Wow. And we're Christians. So be a Christian. Be loving. That's what Christians are. Be kind. That's what Christians are. That's what the Those are the fruits of it's the Spirit. It's not about how you feel. It's always about how you no. feel. No. And you know, when, when that happened so many times and Ken kept saying, for him, he's not working out because... He feels, let's use the word spark. Yeah, it's a covenant. There is no way out. I'm not going out. I want it to work. Then I had a wake up call. Then. <laughs> how about I listen to what these two people are saying <laughs> and see how it's going. And, and I'm that type. If it's going to work, then it really has to work. I have to enjoy every bit of it. Absolutely. I'm sure. Even with sex, if, it, if it's going to happen, then we are both going to have to enjoy it. So how are you going to make it? enjoyable so then i started working on me you put and the past box. and you i was put in, it in a box. box i didn't want to do certain things but i had to do them because that's what i and i had to on what's the word unlearn unlearn, unlearn. Yeah. and renew the mind and renew the mind you know one of the things i liked about the way you handled this was how we had private uh, and then we got uh, sessions and then at times we yeah, had a joint okay. session. I, was, I think it's very, very, very good because sometimes you can't just open up everything when it's you know it's you as well as the counselor. Sometimes you should you should have an individual time with the counselor. Maybe, maybe there'll be some things that you say the first time out, uh, and sometimes it's it's better to to. To be able to say the first time out to somebody, then it, you feel more comfortable to then you know say it to your spouse. So when we're together, have a joint session, you, you you know we might say signal if each other say should, should I bring that, and then I'll say yeah you should go ahead, and then we realize it's not so bad, you know, having that confidence, in you. especially when um, maybe 
like we talked about trust, you know, maybe the first time we said it, it was used against you, but now, you know, you, you're able to say to somebody else that it's safe, and then you build up on it, you build up on that kind of thing. So that thing, I think, really, really helps to have that. And like we said, a lot of people think that, oh, married classes and uh, black groups have their own problems, so we don't need that, we don't need that, but I just, I bet to do yeah. yeah, because I've seen the fruits of it yes. in, in our marriage, mm-hmm. in our lives, and, and I think, um, you know, I think even in a joyful way, um, when we, we all build on to, um, the, the, we have this um, house, um, sorry, um, couples, groups, and things like that, especially in Ghana, Project, etc. Like and of course, it's not everything that they can open up in a big session, but I think that those things help a lot of um, marriages. So if you're out there and you don't have things like that to solve, to solve what you, 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 do, you don't have to do it all by yourself. You, you don't. You know, yeah. and for the benefits of that, I think mm-hmm. packing the, the style I used really mm-hmm. was really a coaching style. Yes. So I used to ask loads of questions. You oh. pushed us. <laughs> oh, Please talk about that yes. because what, what is the difference between a life coach and a counselor? So I think with, with coaching, yeah. it really is about giving you the space to mm-hmm. talk. Um, and often when you're talking, um, a co- what a coach does is listen. So often I would use my listening skills, which, to be honest, before I started coaching, I wasn't very good at. Um, and listen with everything in my being and play back to you what you've said. Yes. And often, if it doesn't resonate with you, it means I haven't heard you. And you would then have to work at ensuring that I've understood. And in, in you understanding what you're saying, it reveals things to yourself. So yes. often I'd ask the question... And you would give an answer. Sometimes you'd be surprised at the answer yourself. Sometimes I'll wait, you wait five minutes for me to give the answer. <laughs> yes. and you're like, we're not moving on until you give the answer. I think that's, yeah. the, that's, that's, yeah. that's a skill yeah. that doesn't come easy as a coach. No. You've, got to, you've got to be comfortable with silences. Yes. Ooh. And if I'm not scared to move on because nothing is happening, I can yeah. sit, as you said, yeah. I can yeah. sit there for five minutes. You sit there. there. It was <laughs> never <nerve-wracking. laughs> okay. I know. Because you're just sitting and she's sitting as well. Waiting for an answer. So it helped you to reach deep down and really yes. think about what you're saying. Yes. And you find the answers within yourself. I think that's yeah. the thing with coaching is yeah. that in the end, you have the answers, not me. Not you. Yeah. yeah. And all yeah. I'm helping you do is find them. Because you, you think through the options. Yes. You are discovering things as you're talking and it's yes. just giving you space and time. And I think that that was good. That was great because... Moving on after that, those years or moments of sessions, when we didn't have to come to you, it's like in our mind we have to think of what would Auntie Jenny we yeah. have to apply the yeah. skills that you use, use to dig deep and deep and deep yes. till we got the answers. Yes. So yes. it was like you handed us some tools that could help us. So it's not like a place we always have to run yeah. to, even though you'll be willing to listen any day, any time. But I'm, I'm glad that's a so she would somebody say, oh, like if I discuss something with her and I'm blah, 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 and then she said, because how do you feel now after you've spoken about it? And yeah. things like that, you know, like, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about it? And it's okay, so what do you think we should do the next time when this happens? And that's a good, and it will help us to build that um, authentic yeah. intimacy. Yes. I'm, I'm so glad we said that yeah. because actually, what coaching is meant to do is to give you the tools. Absolutely mm-hmm. right. Oh, right. So that you can coach yourself. So. so if, as a coach, I carry on with that dependency, I failed. Because mm-hmm. you ought to be. And it's not to say that you won't ever need coaching. Yes, I'm a, I'm a coach and I need coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I sometimes do have coaching. Um, but it's being able to um, allow you to use those things and to think, what would I do? What is causing me to behave like yeah. this? And I think for me, that's my biggest thing. Often when I when I have an outburst, and I, I, I have this phrase, which you probably know, I said, um, respond, don't react. So when I react, I often have to think, ooh, what caused that outburst? Mm. Something's gone on. Because my what I've trained myself to do is to respond. That's right. And if you're responding, you've taken the time to reflect on what's happened and you found a response. If you react, it's like an instant. You haven't you haven't even thought through what's happened. You've just literally gone with your instinct. Um, and what we need to train ourselves to do is to respond and not react. And I think for me that's what coaching did. Guys, this is being intentional with Jessica. And we're still gonna continue, but 
if you are out there, this is Mrs. Jennifer Laban. Yeah. Trust me. This marriage that you see that is so beautiful out there too. Because the truth is, at that time, nobody knew what we were going through. No, no. Everybody thought Ken and Cheska are all the lovey lovies, the perfect. We went through hell in that moment. If you're there and you're struggling with your marriage and you desire authentic marriage, you desire to have a healthy. I mean, what's the point of being in it if you're not going to enjoy it? Yeah. That's that's my policy. Why should I be in it and not enjoy it? Mm. Reach out to me on Be Intentional with Cheska and I'll give you Auntie Jenny's number. <laughs> and trust me, it will be the best decision you took. She will be there to listen. And you 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 can you can you can find a safe place to yeah, learn. Yeah. yeah. So we've 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 established the fact that in that empty box we come in hundred percent. Mm. We've established the fact that we need to assess our expectations. We need to communicate our expectations. We've also established the, the fact that it leads to vulnerability. And trust plays a major role in that vulnerability, mm. in that moment of being vulnerable. And then it leads to a safe place to learn. So I need you to be my safe place I can land and you need me to be the safe place I can land because our natural instinct is you need to land you can't be circling like that and this is just me I remember the times when you couldn't actually open up fully to me as well yeah um, and then we needed to talk and dig deep and one of the things that was stemming out of you know you know, way, 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 way back, you know, because you know, she went to a board and house very early, at like eight years old, I think. Yeah. You know, so things that so she, when she was able to be confident enough to share, she share those things, I had an Amazing. understanding. Amazing. You know, Amazing. so it changed my approach to things. And then she would, sometimes she would say that when I see some of those helpers, I know that it's not towards me. You know, it's like, because I saw this. Um, when I was growing up, I don't want to see it happen to us. You know, maybe she might have an outburst with the kids, and, and I know that maybe it's, it's not what the children have done, but it's because maybe they're seeing something, um, they're doing that resemble something that I'm doing that she doesn't like. Yeah. Yes, so she would. And I want to cast it out. <laughs> no, you are not going to be like this. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, so, uh, so I'm really glad that she was also able to find that. Aspect. Yeah, that, that's, that's the that's aspect. I want you to say it, isn't it? Yes. That, that you're not bringing that to Yes, me. that's the aspect people did you know about me because yeah. I come across as loud and. But yes. the one thing I really wasn't was loud. I, mm -hmm. I, I am not. Mm -hmm. And he was the only one who knew. Mm -hmm. I love my space. I love to be quiet. Mm -hmm. I'm actually an introvert. Yeah. Yes. I had to allow yeah. my extrovert, little extrovert, to overshadow that. Yeah. But if you leave me to it, I would rather want to be by myself. And because of that, my friends, family, nobody knew what I go through. And that's how I grew up. Mm. And the, the, I think what was hard was people come to me with their problems because they feel I'm strong enough. Yeah. So who do I go to? And then when I, all is said and done and I come into the marriage, I feel he also have the same expectations That's from me, of me, that I am strong. So why do I yeah. come and tell? Yeah, yeah, because there are actually things I thought she could take, you know. Yeah, take and it. he yeah, was clueless yeah. of most of the things. Yeah. And I had to tell him, look, the truth is I have these issues going on. I've had it since I was a child. And I'm dealing with it. And I've dealt with it all by myself. I think for me, to be perfectly honest, one of the things I've enjoyed most about this conversation is the analogy that Ken uses about the room. The marriage is a room. With no door, no window, and it's not to make you feel claustrophobic at all. It's a beautiful thing. No, honestly, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, as you say, it's that mindset. And if we go knowing that, and for me, let's take it back to scripture. It's a covenant. You stood yes. in front of God and made those vows yes. before witnesses and before God, mm -hmm. and said, for better or for worse. I don't know whether you respect that for worse. For better? No, we were blessed. <laughs> We were blessed to have my dad, Reverend Victor, say bless our heart. And unknown to us, he just left us to say our vows. Yes. Without telling us. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, day. He took he us to say our own vows. But I should have known because he does that in church. Yeah. But I think 
somehow that escaped me that he would do it to me yes. you know yeah. and he was there the day before everything so I thought he even if I thought of it I would have thought he would give me a hint yeah. and yeah. then there we are in front of everybody so you made your vow and, yes. and, and, yeah. and some of my friends were like I was crying at the oh. vows yeah so I had to go back to our video to and watch it and know what we what said <laughs> because people said we cried at your vows. Wow. He just said, well, say your vows to each other. I was like, what? <laughs> so, every now and then, yes, I used to look at the, watch the video so I can remember what I said before God. What's a covenant? And what's a covenant? God never breaks that covenant. No. And, and so, so we shouldn't. You know, he says, and therefore a man shall leave and cleave, and the two shall be one. And that's the thing. You are one. You in are God's one. eyes, you are one. Yeah. So that the marriage is who keeps. And as Christians, we hold on to that. And we also know, you know, and when you're talking about putting things into the box, um, you know, the Bible also talks very much about the fact that you can't, whatever you sow, you'll reap. If you sow corn, you're going to reap corn. If you sow tomatoes, you're going to reap tomatoes. Yeah. So don't expect to sow some measly seeds and expect a bumper harvest. It ain't going to happen. Okay. In a way, he said, it's for keeps. I was going to ask you, uh, how about the one I'm being abused? Oh, yes. I think we won't talk about that today yeah. in building authentic marriage intimacy because the reason why we won't talk about if you are all getting prepared and coming in with all of me, all of me, that wouldn't even come in. You wouldn't yeah. be able to. So there's a solution other. for those who didn't start right and maybe uh, things, you know, yeah. uh, things are torn apart and things like that. There are still steps to redeem. The, the marriage, or even if you, you get a divorce, there's still ways Absolutely. for you to come back and, and, and Absolutely. you know, and, okay. and have a fresh start. Yeah. So, the conclusion of the matter is marriage is an empty box, and we all fail in what we want put in. Like you rightly said, if it's going to be a room without doors or windows, not that we want you to be close to home. <laughs> It's going to be where we're building our castles, we're building our empire, we're building the dream marriage, the authentic marriage and intimacy that we want. That's all there is to not going out, but staying in to build the palace that we want. And this has been a great time. But we're going on the part two. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Watch out for the next video. We're going on the part two of this edition of the marriage as an empty box and what you can come in and what you can take out. Definitely you cannot take out what you haven't put in. Yeah. That makes you a thief or an unrubber. <laughs> Whichever. But that cannot be done. So stay tuned. The intentional about everything.